In the first phase of the research, we visited 40 schools in the summer term of 2017. What we found was, firstly, that um, there was a lack of curriculum knowledge in a lot of schools. We also found that there was a lack of a shared vocabulary in many schools as well. So, depending on what school you went to, people were often using the same word but attaching a different meaning to it. Skills would be a very good example of that. Um, we also found that there was a strong tendency for some schools to conflate the curriculum with um, assessment, with qualifications and with the timetable. Firstly, we saw a big problem of curriculum narrowing. So, in primary, for example, you can see that in year six, there is often a tendency for schools to spend a lot of time on preparation for the assessments rather than on actual curriculum content. In secondaries, we often saw that key stage three was um, shortened without really thinking about the consequences of that in terms of the knowledge that pupils were meant to generate. So there were a number of issues that we found. We also found a lot of teaching to the test and that was uh, especially the case in subjects that were part of national assessments. Um, so there were a number of issues with that as well and we also found that there was a lack of access to the curriculum for some groups of pupils in some schools, in particular the most disadvantaged. Why is that important? Firstly, um, knowledge is cumulative, so the knowledge that you acquire in one stage of your education forms the basis for what knowledge and skills you then develop further on. So when there are gaps in that knowledge, that can be a real problem in terms of progression. Um, that's particularly an issue for disadvantaged pupils because we find that gaps in knowledge and skills um, increase the gap in attainment between more advantaged and disadvantaged pupils. So it is actually quite a major issue. So we need to make sure that we have a curriculum that is cumulative, that um, has clear building blocks and that takes into account what pupils need to know to go to the next phase of their learning in a particular subject. In the second phase, we uh, visited 23 schools which were uh, seen as particularly invested in curriculum development. So we wanted to find some examples of where things were um, really being thoughtfully done. Um, what we found there was firstly that um, in those particular schools, um, there was a lot of emphasis on, on how children actually develop knowledge, how they make that progression. We found that um, they had teachers found it easier to talk about progression when they were focusing on knowledge more so than when they were focusing on skills. Um, we found that there were schools that were very strong in terms of their thinking about assessment, which was seen very much as a way of um, being able to review what they were doing, um, revising their curriculum if necessary and not as a goal in and of itself. Um, and we found that um, the role of leaders also in those schools was very central. Because in the second phase we'd focused very strongly on those schools that were most invested in curriculum development, in the third phase we decided to look at a broader sample of schools. So we looked at 64 schools that represented a range of types of schools, intake and also attainment and um, offset grades as well. Um, and in those schools we found uh, a lot of what we saw in phases one and two confirmed but also some new interesting findings. So um, firstly we saw that in uh, primary schools in particular the quality of curriculum was stronger in some subjects than in others and in especially it was stronger in the core subjects English and mathematics and in the foundation subjects. Um, we also found that whereas in most schools there was a strong link between the quality of the intent around curriculum, what they want to achieve, and the quality of the implementation, that was not universally the case. So we did find some schools, especially in primary, where there was a strong curricular intent, but the implementation was a lot weaker. And conversely, we found some schools, especially in secondary, where there was evidence of good implementation in lessons and in subjects, but where the intent in the discussions with senior leaders was not clear. That, of course, has got something to do with the more um, subject-based nature of secondary schools, where you can obviously have a very strong
curriculum in a particular department, but not in the school as a whole.